Well, praise the Lord, and welcome to the Word of Integrity podcast. I'm Broderick Hennington, pastor of Integrity Bible Church. What a word for you today. I believe that you will be blessed tremendously as we share on the subject, the blessings of honor. I taught on this maybe sometime last year, but it was on my heart to share upon it again. And therefore, I believe that you will be blessed. The blessings of honor. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's get right into it. Father, we thank you and praise you so much for this podcast today. I thank you for those who are listening. I thank you for blessing and edifying them in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory, honor, and praise, and I greet by saying amen. The blessings of honor. If you have your Bibles, uh, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 6 as I define honor just from the Webster Dictionary, honor is defined as to respect, to esteem, to give special recognition for an achievement, to give special recognition to a person and authority or position or to value the word honor. The word honor in the Greek is a word that's called to mail. Sounds similar to uh, tomato, but it's tomato. It's T-I-M-A-O. And it means to prize or to revere. In Ephesians chapter 6, go ahead and get your Bibles and turn it there. To honor was the first commandment with promise. The commandment to honor was the first command with promise. In Ephesians chapter 6, and look at verse 2 and 3. It says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. In other words, out of the commandments that God gave, the first one he gave and attached a promise to it was the command to honor. And he said to honor your father and mother. It's interesting that he used the positions of father and mother in this uh, particular passage because this is the first line and level of authority that we have in our lives as children of mother and father, of father and mother. The first level of authority, and God said to honor them. God is very big on honor. He went on to attach a promise to it, say, if you do this, it will be well with thee, that means things will go well in your life, and thou will live long on the earth. The promise of long life is also attached to honor. I bring this out because we're living in a time where the devil is trying to cause even the people of God uh, uh, not to honor. Uh, we're living in a a disrespectful, dishonorable society. And we understand the world with dishonor. We understand that, but not the people of God. But we are in a time when even the Christians would dishonor. I've seen it so much so in my lifetime dishonor, disrespect. But the Bible speaks against that. The Bible tells us to honor. And to honor, you don't have to like. Uh, honor is not based upon feelings. It's just based upon a command. You just decide to do it. I'm going to honor you because you'll 
a due honor. And the Bible tells us that we should honor or render honor to those that are due honor. And if we do so, starting out with our father and mother, that is to just teach us and to train us to give honor to those who are in authority and who are in positions of esteem in positions that are, be, uh, that are to be respected we're to show honor to them. Um, I want you to turn your Bibles to, let's see, let's look at um, Romans. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans. Chapter 12. In verse 10, it says, Be kindly affections one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. In other words, preferring your brother, your sister with honor, uh, being courteous. You may be in the sh shopping place or whatever, the grocery store, and someone may be right beside you. You walk up around the same time, and maybe instead of you getting the buggy or whatever, you tell the other person, go right ahead. In other words, I get one after you. There are so many ways that we can show honor and respect to people honoring uh, those that have authority. And we'll look at a couple of scriptures concerning that. Showing honor, showing love. We're in a time where people think that it's okay to dishonor. But I want you to know something. When you show honor, there are blessings that are attached to showing honor. I want you to turn to 1 Peter. That's what I was thinking about just a moment ago when I had you to go to Romans. I definitely want to also go to Peter. First Peter. And look at chapter 2 of 1 Peter. Starting with verse 17. It says, honor all men. This boldly declares. 1 Peter 2, 17. Honor all men. It says, love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the king. But it starts off saying, honor all men. This is what we're to do. We're to honor everybody. To honor all men. To love the brotherhood. That's those who are in the Christian faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ. And of course, we know we're to show love to sinners as well. But it tells us, love the brother. Love the brotherhood says, fear God and honor the king. The king is the person that would be in authority. Which we don't have kings here. We have presidents and uh, governmental officials and so forth. But it's amazing, even though the Bible tells us to, to honor the king. But it's amazing that people don't. Don't you find yourself in that category where people dog out and disrespect the president? Did you know that's against the word of God? The Bible tells us that we should honor them. Say honor them. 
honor the brotherhood. Say, honor the king. You can't say that you are honoring the king or the president. If you're listening in another country, you may have a king or whatever. But we're to show honor. And God knows how to protect those that are his. He can still protect us and bless us. Just because we're honoring, we may feel as though, well, if I honor, that's going to take something away from me. It's not going to take anything away from you. It's going to add something to you. And that's the blessings of God. But we're told that we're to honor. You may say, well, I don't have nothing good to say. Well, it's good. Don't say anything. Just pray for them then. That's what my mama taught me. So if you don't have anything good to say, don't say nothing at all. So if you feel as though I can't honor the president or that's not the president that I voted for, it doesn't matter. If your candidate did not win the election, you're still to pray. This is what the scripture teaches us. We're to still show honor. And we're still to pray. The Bible tells us that. Pray for those in authority that we may live a quiet and peaceful life. This is what we're supposed to do. But we're to show honor. I stated that um, I believe a lot of people are in jail and prison because they did not learn to honor. And it led them down a, a path of destruction. They did not honor their parents, which is the first level of authority. Therefore, they didn't honor their teachers in school. They cut up, did their own thing. They did not honor legal authority, the police, the law enforcement. And... Uh, and just those that are in authority, period. Some people just refuse to respect and to honor authority. But this is a bad thing. If you allow a person to dishonor authority, you're hurting them very, very bad. Because if you won't honor your own father and mother, I mean, who else will you honor? You're not going to honor your teacher because you should have a firm love for your father and mother and respect. They birth you. They're raising you and taking care of you. And you're not going to honor your teacher who's trying to teach you and give you the basics of education. You're not going to honor law enforcement, which many times lead to problems. So we have to be taught to honor. And the Bible tells us that if we honor, things will go well with us and we'll live long on the earth. I know some people may feel as though, well, this is a child's command. No, this is for everybody. It tells us starting out as children, but it's not limited to children. This is for all of us. We are to honor. And um, 1 Peter um, chapter 2, verse 17, we read, Honor all men. Love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. This is what we're supposed to do. I remember, I won't give the names. Um, perhaps a relative or friend of that person could be watching, but when I was a young guy, I wasn't a, quite a little boy, but I was still in my boyhood, useful age. I had a friend 
who was very disrespectful to his mother and father. He would even, even curse them out, use profanity. And I remember another one of my friends told me that such and such, he cussed his mom out. And I didn't believe it until one day I heard it. Cursing his mom and his dad. They had had him at an old age. And so they were up in age, but he would curse them and use profanity. And I thought that was bad then. I mean, I knew better than that than to use profanity against my parents, but um, I remember the first day in high school, it was the very first day of school when I went to high school. I was now a high schooler, had just completed my junior high grades. And I remember getting out of school. We were all excited because this is a new adventure for us. We are, we're high schoolers now. We're thinking we're big time. And got home and one of my friends said, did you hear about such and so? Which was a mutual friend of both of ours. I said, no. I said, what? I said, man, he got hit by a car. The car killed him. Car tore him up. Man, I was I was hurt. And my friend, we were not close friends. I say friends, associates, acquaintances, or whatever, but I grew up in the neighborhood together, casual kind of friend. I was so hurt. Oh man. Got hit by a car, so yeah, I said, he's dead. Said, wow. Of course, I guess I was around 14 at that time. Uh, my first day in high school. And I didn't right, really not, I really didn't understand that until after I gave my life to the Lord at 19 and gotten saved and started to learn about the Bible and the principles of the Bible. And I was reminded of that situation. And I believe, now this is my personal belief, that because of that dishonor, that a door was open in this young guy's life to bring death. I believe that he opened up the door for death because of that dishonor. And there are many times that we've done things dishonorable and we've opened up the door. Whether it would be on a job, dishonoring and disrespecting authority. See, it's never the will of God for us to dog out into dishonor. If we feel as, as though we're being mistreated or if we desire something, we just take it to the Lord in prayer. This is what the Bible tells us. To take it to the Lord in prayer. We have songs we sing that tells us to take it to the Lord in prayer. But the Bible tells us, let our requests be made known unto God, whatever the situation may be. Let your request be made known unto God. And it went on to say that the peace of God, which passes for all, all understanding, will keep our minds and hearts. We are to show honor always, regardless of whether or not we like the person. If we don't like someone, we feel as though that justifies the means to dishonor them. But it doesn't justify that mean to dishonor. We're never to dishonor. We're always to show love. We're always to show respect. Give honor to whom honor is due. 
regardless of how you feel about them. So I'm honoring you, not because I necessarily, and you wouldn't tell them this, but you know, in your mind, I'm honoring you, not necessarily because I like you, but because God told me to. So I want to keep myself right with God. So I'm going to honor your position and respect your position, even though I don't necessarily care for you. And this is the way that we may feel, but that's fine. Just do it, show love, honor them, and hey, keep it moving. Someone may say, well, why? Well, why? Because God told you to. That's why. And secondly, it'll keep the blessings of God in your life and on your life. God tells us if we honor, he was telling the children of Israel about parental authority, said if you honor them, things will go well with you. So it'll be well with you. And you'll live long on the earth. Some people, Christians, they neglect this scripture concerning long life. But did you know that that's a scripture for long life if you've honored? And if your parents are still living, praise God, well, let's get busy honoring. That is a promise for long life. Lord, I was honorable to my parents. So, Lord, I thank you for lengthening my days. Thank you for giving me long life. And you can claim that even when the enemy may try to put sickness on you or cut your life short. Then, no, Lord, I have a promise of long life because I was honorable. This is the first commandment with promise. If God makes a promise, of course, we can put our faith and latch hold to that promise that God has made. You have a right to that. You are honorable. You've honored authority in your life. You have a right to claim that promise. Many of you are honorable, even when it was difficult to. You are honorable uh, to your parents, even on your job, when the boss man wasn't deserving of honor, or the boss lady, but you were honorable. I'm telling you, my friend, God said if you would honor, things would be well with you and you would live long on the earth. While we're in the um, First Peter, look at chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Um, it talks about husband and wives here. It starts out with the wives in verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Likewise, your wives... Be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That word, their conversation, is an old English word which actually means lifestyle. In other words, the Bible tells us that we can win our husbands, those who are wives, to the Lord by your lifestyle. It tells us that. Showing honor, talk about being in subjection. In other words, because you are honoring, how powerful is that? You can win your husband to the Lord from honoring. Man, honor is very powerful. It says, uh, so those that are without the word, they may not want to hear anything about the Bible and go to church, but they can watch your lifestyle and your life becomes an open Bible to them. And God will use your life to win your husband. 
This is an answer to prayer to somebody. Say, how can I win my old unsaved husband who don't care nothing about church or God or the Bible or whatever? Start to honor your chaste conversation. Don't be disrespectful and dishonorable to your husband. He may not deserve your respect in the natural, but nevertheless, you're doing it because God told you, and you're doing it unto the Lord. It says, while they behold your chaste conversations coupled with fear, your chaste lifestyle, a holy lifestyle coupled with reverence, this is what will win. It goes on to say, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorn of plaiting the hair and the wearing of gold of, of putting on of apparel. Some got this confused and thought that they should not plait their hair back in the day and thought they should not wear gold or the putting on of apparel. Well, the putting on apparel, that's clothing. So it can't just mean that. You know you're supposed to wear clothes, but it had nothing to do with you not being able to plait your hair or wear gold. And we have some denominations who thought that wearing gold and jewelry was excessive and, and frowned upon that. But that was not what uh, Peter was talking about at all. He was saying you don't use these kind of natural things to change the man or to win him over to the Lord. So not to play another hair, you don't use that. Or we could say any hairstyle. Uh, he used that, planting of the hair, the, the dooring, dooring of planting the hair or the wearing of gold, which was jewelry. You don't put on jewelry to win your husband over or whatever. That's not to say we shouldn't wear jewelry. Nothing wrong with wearing gold or wearing jewelry. Say, but don't let this be your bait, what you're using to win your husband over to the Lord. Or the putting on of a pair of clothing, the way that you dress. This is not the bait that you use to win your husband, but a chaste, honorable lifestyle. This is what God say you use. Verse 4 say, But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God a great price. Say, But let it be a meek and quiet spirit. Say, This is what you use saying it's of great value in the eyes of God. Say, for after this manner in the old times, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. Even Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are. You are the daughter of Sarah. Yeah, I think I said Sarah, didn't it? Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. In other words, you don't have to be afraid of this to honor. Sometimes ladies can think, well, if I honor, man, I'm going to be walked on like a rug. But now God gives you his promise. Say, so now you're not going to be walked on like a rug. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure that you're protected. You don't have to be afraid. The Bible tells us that we don't have to be afraid in any amazement with that. And it goes on to say um, in verse 7, it doesn't leave the husbands out. Check this out, men. Say, you husbands, say, likewise, you husbands, dwell with them, that's your wives, that's the subject, dwell with them according to knowledge, that that you know about your own wife, 
dwell with them according to knowledge, being a blessing to them, giving honor, now that word is again, giving honor unto the wife. The Bible tells us that, husband, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, not necessarily spiritually being weaker, but naturally, of course, the man is normally the stronger one or whatever, and even emotionally and what have you, normally stronger than the lady. So give honor unto that wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. In other words, husband, I don't know if you knew it or not, but you know it now, that your prayers can be hindered for dishonoring or disrespecting your wife. God is like, I don't even want to hear what you got to say. Look at it again in verse 7. Likewise, you husbands dwell with your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. You're heirs together with your spouse. You all share life together. You're heirs together of the grace of life. That your prayers be not hindered. God just casually threw that in there. So yeah, give honor to them as heirs of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. In other words, when God is saying, I won't even answer your prayer. Man, I need all my prayers answered. I don't need no hindrances to my prayers. So I'm going to make sure that I honor my wife and everybody else. Listen, you don't want your prayers hindered. God is saying, I won't answer your prayers. That's God's daughter. God's not going to let you mistreat his daughter. Man, you don't want anybody mistreating your daughter. You don't want a man mistreating your daughter. They're not going to be on your good list if they mistreat your daughter. But do you think you can mistreat God's daughter and be on his good list? You got another thought coming. You better treat that woman good, man and show honor to her. You show honor. That's the way you get on God's good list. God's like, I'll, I'll hear you if you can treat my daughter good. Now, of course, that's not the only thing we have to do in life, but that's one of the things. You treat God's daughter good. God said, I'll listen to your prayer. You don't want anything hindering your prayers. You don't want that, believe me. So the Bible talks about honor right there. That's a great benefit just right there. Knowing that if we honor our spouses, honor our wives, God will hear our prayers and answer. But dishonoring your wife, disrespecting, you can hinder your prayer. God won't even listen to them. Uh, it's like, I'm not fixing to answer your prayers, man, and you mistreat my daughter. Uh, it's not going to do that. Well, he says it right here. Don't take my word for it. Take his. Right here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. So these are things that we must understand when we talk about honor. Of course, wives are to honor their husbands. The husbands are to honor their wives. And God becomes their protector when you don't. In other words, God steps in. And you don't want God to step in and to penalize you for being dishonorable. You don't want that. So let's make sure that we honor. Jesus was the perfect example of one who honored 
In Philippians, the Bible tells us that Jesus humbled himself to the death of the cross. He humbled himself and honored God, wanting the will of God to be done. God loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And Jesus submitted himself and honored his father. At one time, he, he got a little word and said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He said, but not my will. Your will be done. He was honoring the father. That your will be done. And he went to the cross so that you and I would not have to. And the Bible tells us because he humbled himself so low that God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father because he was willing to humble himself so low and to honor his Father. There's always elevation that comes from honoring. There's always promotion and elevation, whether it be positional or your job or in the spirit or elevation in your household or what have you, where God calls you to be on a higher level in the sight of your husband, there's always elevation that comes. Once you start honoring today, those who are listening, you just repent for dishonoring if you've been dishonorable and say, Lord, I make a decision to start honoring today and watch and see, uh, don't you uh, watch and see uh, that you uh, see elevation coming. Watch and see, you'll see elevation coming in your life in whatever area that you decide to honor in. Don't be dishonorable. We need honor in our society. We need honor in our life. But you first decide to be honorable. You first decide to be honorable. I want to um, pray with you in just a second. Um, let me say this. I have several more notes on this. Um, and I may take up with it on next time finish it out or I may deal with something different. But really watch your tongue when it comes to people that are in authority. And don't get a dishonorable heart. Keep an honorable heart. I see people, I hear them, they get on the internet or social media now and they dog out leaders, uh, government leaders. They dog out the pastor or what have you. Not just on social media, but they'll do that in person. Dog out the pastor. And this is definitely against the will of God. Matter of fact, in 1 Timothy, you can turn there if you desire, I'll just quote it. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. So let the elders be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. In other words, you honor the elders. And say the ones that rule well, say so let them be counted worthy of double honor. You're to show honor. People try to use excuses. Um, 
think of a situation that happened years ago, maybe a decade ago, where an individual, well, they had gotten mad at something and didn't want to honor. And one of my leaders would come and say, hey, let's give the Lord, and I hear this, let's give the Lord a hand of praise by our pastor, or this person stop. I mean, they, they used to, I knew that they had gotten angry about something, but they stopped standing and giving God a hand of praise. And I'm not gonna clap for a man or what have you, which we straightened it out. We straightened it out, Lord, that you're not gonna be here. This person was a leader too, that you're not gonna be here. It was a lower level of leadership, but still it was a person who had been here a while. He just said, you're not going to be here in leadership and whatever and not honor and respect the pastor. In other words, we know you're mad or something. But if you're in the courtroom, the bailer will come out and says, all arise. Say, all arise, and you're going to get up. You better get up if you know what's good for you. Or if you were in the presence of the president of the United States or the governor of your state, and they come in and say, let's stand and receive the honorable whatever. You're going to stand, but they wanted to disrespect the pastor because they were angry. But we weren't going to tolerate it, so we, we corrected that. So I'm fortunate that the person, they decided they would leave because we corrected them. But that's okay, that's fine. That's fine. And we're not gonna have you as a leader and you're gonna be disrespectful. You can't have that. That's why I stated honor is not based on feelings. It's just simply based on obedience based on obedience to God's command. But I would say honor the king. Really the king can represent anybody in authority from the president on down. So you honor those people that are in authority. And God says, I'll bless you as a result. We know you will. Because if you tell us to honor them, we always have blessings as a result of obedience. I just want to say to you today, don't allow the enemy to get you into a place of dishonor. You honor regardless of whether you like the person or not. Whether it comes to politics or whatever, you do your part, you cast your vote, but you still honor all me. You still honor the king. You honor the person that's in authority. Don't be dishonorable. Wives, honor your husband. It'll bring more blessings to you. <laughs> you honor your husband. It'll bring more blessings to you. Husbands, honor your wives. It'll bring blessings to you. You'll find favor with God. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Why? Because you married his daughter and you're taking care of his daughter. God said, I'll give you favor. We need all the favor we can get, man of God. We need all the favor we can get. So be good to your spouses. I want to uh, pray with you. Perhaps you're listening and you've been dishonorable. You're cuss folks out and talk about people and dog them out. And if I go into it on next week, I'll talk a little bit about LaShawn Hurrah, which is the evil tongue or evil speaking. In the Greek, it's called LaShawn Hurrah, the curse of the evil tongue to speak evil and to dog out people. Well, that's definitely not supposed to be. Definitely not supposed to be. So 
So let's put a guard over our mouth. Scripture tells us the person that sinneth not with their mouth, the same as a perfect man or woman. If you sin not with your mouth, you can broaden your tongue and keep your tongue. It says, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, a perfect person, he, you know, whether male or female. Uh, for those who may want to look that up, it's in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 2. If you cannot offend in word, the same as a perfect person, not to offend. Let's pray. I want to pray two prayers. I want to pray first for the people who have been dishonorable. You're used to cussing folks out and dogging them out and talking about people as if that was going to get you somewhere. It's not going to get you anywhere. But a hard life is short. I want to pray for you, for those who desire to repent for that. Then after that, I want to pray for those who want to accept Christ. Let's pray for all of those who feel as though that you've been dishonorable in some type of way, whether it's to your parents, dogging the boss out, or to your husband or wife, or, or whomever you've been disrespectful and dishonorable. Let's pray. Father, I come before you asking you to forgive me. Just repeat after me. Asking you to forgive me for being dishonorable. Lord, forgive me for my evil speaking concerning my, and you fill in the blank there, concerning my spouse, my supervisor, my president, or whomever. You fill in the blank. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. I repent of that sin. That's what it is, people. It's a sin. I repent of that sin, and I will not do that anymore. Thank you for cleansing me by your blood. In Jesus' name, I thank you that I'm forgiven. Amen. Now, if you're watching and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do so. I understand if you've been dishonorable and you haven't accepted Jesus because you haven't had the life of God in you, but you can change all of that right now, right this second. Would you accept Jesus as your personal Savior by praying with me, just praying sincerely? Dear God, I come before your holy throne asking you to forgive me of my sins, all of my sins, the sins of my life. Forgive me. Come into my heart, Jesus, as my personal Savior and Lord. I believe that you shed your blood for the remission of my sins. I believe that your blood has cleansed me of all my sins. I accept you in my heart, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for receiving me, O oh Lord, into your family. Thank you, O Lord, for being my Lord and Savior. According to your word, I am now saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. If you prayed that prayer, my friend, Welcome to the family of God. I'm so proud of you. Hey, give me a call and let me know what you've done. Call me and tell me, hey, I've accepted Christ as my personal Savior. Whoever else is the phone, just tell them I was watching the podcast and Pastor Broderick told me to call and tell him what I've done. Well, would you tell him that I've accepted Jesus as my personal Savior? And give us your name. We'll pray for you. We'll put you on the prayer list and we'll pray for you. We're not going to put you on any kind of mailing list. We just want to pray for you. 
And if you need any spiritual materials such as a Bible or other spiritual helps, we'll be more than happy to send that to you if you would call us and let us know. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank God for you. You should see the number on the screen. It's 205-833-4415. Call us and let us um, put your name on our prayer list and let us know what you've done. We love you and we look forward to seeing you all next time. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord. And welcome to the Word of it.